So in this video, I want to talk about Moonlit Fantasy Volume 2. Honestly, I really wish these volumes came out before, or at least started coming out at the early stages of Season 2, just because I feel like this would have gone a lot better as far as, like, my excitement. I just, like, the first volume came out when Season 2 was airing, and then the second volume came out a little bit after, and I was like, damn, I kind of wish I, like, was reading these. Because the thing is, is that the these volumes are Season 1 material. Which, it's nice that we're getting them. I've been begging for these. But the fact is, is that the anime is so far ahead. So, when I was reading this, a lot of the stuff in this is pretty much in the anime. It actually does a very low adaptation. Volume 1 had some minor details that I mentioned. Specifically, the end component that I talked about. And then, of course, how the girls behave. And I feel like that's really the only thing that they kind of seem to really tone down. Is how outlandish the girls are. And the only thing that really is skipped in this volume is not so much skipping the story itself, it's more just like removing some of the context of how the main protagonist feels about the girls. Because, of course, these girls are attractive. Like, let, let's not beat around the bush here. These girls are quite attractive from an anime's perspective. Now, from the light novel's perspective, the art style, maybe you, you might see something different, but they are definitely quite attractive and he even he kind of notes on that but he has no desire to be with them and he notes in the light novel why but in the anime he doesn't so much note on that if really at all and that simply just has to come down to their personality he finds their personality a little bit too hard to handle they are like children in a playground constantly going at each other or as likes to refer to it like two cats hissing at each other because they'll have their moments where they're working together and the next minute they're hissing at each other for his attention or his approval or something like that and so I think he finds it a little bit overwhelming and he doesn't really find them attractive from a from a personality standpoint so from a physical attraction he probably does he probably thinks they're very attractive i mean i see them as very attractive because they, they do they look they look amazing but yeah their personalities are very very overbearing and that in volume one was very prevalent of just how crazy they are so in volume two i feel like going forward you're going to see that a lot more the thing is like i said is that because the anime is so far ahead it makes it really hard to review these from a just a light novel perspective because you can't really speculate until i get ahead of the anime because i already know what's going to happen after volume two all i can really do is make a judgment based on the differences of the source material and more just talk about what's already been covered but most of it is in the anime as well so it is a good read if you are an anime fan and you want more Moonlit Fantasy content, I would recommend reading the light novels. Because, yeah, you do get the full experience. You get the full context of how he sees the world, how other people see the world, how they interact with each other. And a lot of the little context is added in. But, like I said, the main meat and potato, I would say like 90 to 95% of the story is there and the context is there. There's just little things, like little interactions where he's talking to the guy that's trying to save his wife and kids, or wife and daughters. They have some different mindsets and they just kind of behave a little bit different and some of the interactions feel a little bit different compared to the anime. It's not bad. You, you can tell why they've pruned it. It's just Again, they don't want to drag an entire scene on for an additional two, three minutes or so. They just want to kind of like get to the point a lot of the times, which is kind of funny because if you've watched the anime, most of the complaints from some people are, oh, it drags on too much, there's too much yapping. And I'm like, well, actually, there's a little bit more yapping in the light novels and they prune it just a little bit more. But hey, it's nothing compared to a reincarnated at a conference call. So I love referencing that because it just upsets people. But the one other thing at the end, which was I thought was interesting, was the amphitheater. Now, I need to probably re-watch the anime at this point, because I don't remember there really being an amphitheater. Maybe I'm just imagining the amphitheater in the light novels being much more bigger and grander than what the anime's shown. Because to me, when I think of the amphitheater and them using that as a training and ranking system and all the rest which is again in the anime but the way they make it sound and the way they word it is so much more grander and that's what i mean about and this is something i spoke about in the slime light novel series is that when it comes to light novels your imagination can be so much more vivid 
and so much more like insane. Like you can picture way more crazier things as long as the wording allows you to lead to that. While the anime sometimes can tone things down, and I think in this case it definitely does tone a couple of things down where it's like, mm, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more watered down. But that's just how I see it. Again, all the major keynotes are there, the traveling, the merch and stuff, the, the exams, there's a little bit of stuff to do with registration information. There's, a, again, little bits and pieces of context. Like, if you really, really, really want the minor details, and I, I could honestly write down dot notes of them, but it's just, at that point, you're nitpicking. Because there's just little things where he talks about, like, how the system works, the traveling, the fact that their information kind of got lost because of the destruction there and how it kind of has like a fee to using the card but it's so minimal that it doesn't really matter and it's like telecommunication like kind of system but it's very limited amount of information and then there's the tablet and there's some interesting like systems that they kind of like use as like oh well in the in the world of earth our world you know we've got telecommunication information being spread through different ways whether it's cables or satellite or beams and whatnot but with this system they have like a kind of like a card system where they pass information across through different methods and all that and it allows you to track stuff it, it's those little details that they go over little context but it's nothing groundbreaking i find it interesting but it's not gonna like be the be law end all and then of course he goes over some of the stuff when it comes to alchemy some of the processes some of the stuff where he's kind of like oh this stuff is quite rare gonna keep some of this other stuff as extra gonna pass this off to the girls like the demi plane get them to do more research on that and then of course the season stuff gets brought up the demi plane seasons and how it stopped expanding I don't remember that ever being brought up in the anime. Maybe it's just because when you're watching the anime, you kind of just don't always pay, because you're watching all the spectacle stuff. You, it sometimes just goes over your head. But I don't remember them ever talking about the expanding stopping, but the weather changing, yes. The weather changing was brought up, honestly, more in Season 2 than it was in Season 1, but that's because they resolved it in Season 2. I know, bit of a spoiler, and I kind of feel a bit bad there, but it just kind of slipped. I mean, it's just because, again... We know what happens, but the whole weather plane demi stuff, it, it more just goes over the seasonal changes. If clearly, they were going to fix it, so it's not really a spoiler if you know. If there's a problem, they'll fix it. But as far as the stopped expanding part, I don't remember that. Maybe I've just got very short memory. So, hmm. He also brings up the fact that he wants to know more about the heroes and their levels and intel on that. That's something else that's brought up. I don't feel like he really ever brought up the heroes in the early stages of the story. He didn't really show much interest. He more finds the, he more finds an interest in the later on parts, like again, season two. So that's where I feel like there's little things. It's some of the monologuing that gets pruned off. Still a really good volume. Highly recommend it if you want all the itty gritty extra details. But if you really really just wanted the bulk of the story like 90 percent i'd say 95 you could squeeze it up to then yeah the the anime does a decent job but there are little details volume one i feel like skipped more more as far as like removing the craziness of the girls and the last part which i feel like the reason why they skipped that part out of volume one is because they don't want to spoil the idea that he will work with the with the other races and it does bring it up in this volume as well, the reception chick that's overseeing all the merch and stuff. She brings up the fact that he can speak multiple languages and be like, oh, that's really useful. You can use that to your advantage with trading and stuff because you can work with other races. So the humans aren't against all the races. It just seems to be the certain demons they have a really big problem with. And in volume one, they kind of hint that there's going to be some form of communication between them or him and them. So I feel like that's why they took that out to not throw the punchline there. So that's not really a spoiler from a light novel's perspective, but it would be a spoiler from an anime's perspective if you were just watching season one. So I think that's very deliberate. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of volume two of Moonlit Fantasy? 
I'm more excited as the vo as, at the idea of more of the volumes coming out because, like I said, I want to get ahead of the anime. And with Season 3 announced and coming out at a later date, I really want to get ahead of Season 2 before Season 3 comes out. So I really hope they pump more volumes out so that I can get ahead. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.